this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. Welcome to this episode of our typewriter tutorials. Today we're looking at a 1941 Royal Companion and this is a smaller version of even their regular portable. So I would, um, this is almost like an ultra portable. It's a small portable typewriter. This is great for those of you with smaller hands um, or if you're gonna um, be carrying your typewriter around, you want something that you can take from place to place for whatever reason you have, whether you're part of a writing group or you just like to go to an outdoor cafe or to a coffee shop to write. Um, this is gonna be uh, smaller and a lot more lightweight and easy to use. So this, again, is a 1941 Royal Companion. The link below You'll see the original product listing so you can look at up close photos and including photos of uh, the ribbon area. Um, there's also a typing demo link down there so you can see how this particular one types. But if you've got one already or you found one, I hope this helps you learn how to use your typewriter. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, we're gonna start from the back here. So here's your back plate. This particular typewriter has black gloss speed lines and a lot of times they're going this way you know but this one is coming down and it comes down to here and it's really cool looking I'll lift that up again so you can see it has the round black glass keys that's the original this is a kind of a um, basic model so you're not gonna find a tabulator on this um, but it does have a backspace and a margin release and that's about it Let's go ahead and um, here's the carriage and I'm gonna show you how to load the paper. So you just put your paper against this back plate right here. You just set it there, you don't need to press it down and then you just turn your handle. Now one of the things for some of these older typewriters is the plate and over time gets hard and so that can impact the um, impressions of how you type on it. So some people that's a big deal and others it's not. Um, it is uh, kind of hard to find uh, people who can replace the platen for you. Um, I believe there's one guy who actually makes the rubber for the platens out on the East Coast, but I don't have that information because we do not replace platens. We service and repair, do minor repairs on our typewriters, but we don't refurbish or restore. So that means we don't replace any parts on it. So just be aware, especially as you get into the older typewriters, that platen can be hard or it can be cracked. And um, you can probably do some searches. I've heard that like peppermint oil is good um, at kind of softening those up, but I'm not sure. This particular one still types really well. Um, I didn't find any issues with the platen on it, but just be aware that that might be an issue for yours. Okay, so I've loaded my paper um, and it came out nice and even. However, if it wasn't, you can, there's a paper release right here and you just pull that forward and that releases the tension on your paper so that you can move it around. And remember, your paper always goes underneath this metal bar. Okay, so, um, and once you have your paper lined up where you want, then you just re-engage, okay? All right. Um, to release your carriage, there's a small, the shorter lever on the right side, and I think it's just the right side, I don't see one on the left, and you just pull that forward. And there you go, and you can hear your bell. Um, now, the bell will go off at your margin. So let's set our margins, and I should have taken the paper out, but let me lift it up, that'll be easier. Oh, by the way, here, right here is your serial number, and then you can go to typewriterdatabase.com and look up um, the year of manufacture on your typewriter. Now to set your margins, you just press and drag. You'll see two little metal pieces here. They are movable and you just press and drag. That's how you set your margins. Okay, and remember the carriage will move only as far as you have your margins set. 
Okay, on this side, you're gonna see your return handle, and that's gonna advance either one or two lines. Okay, so that's the two options. This, I believe, is to release the platen out of the typewriter, and I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, that is more for people who want to take it out to clean it or work on it, and so that is for somebody else. That's not something that we get into. Now, on the left side of this typewriter, you'll see a button on the handle. It's not gonna be on the right side. It's not here, but it's only here. Let me see if I can lift it up. A little silver button. If you push that in, that releases the platen, and that comes in really handy. So you can see I've already got some typing on this. And um, I've reloaded the paper, and let's say I want it to line up just right so I can keep typing, but it's not exactly right, and I can't, and by turning the handle, it's not going to line up just right. So I just press this little button, and then I can line it up just right, and then I can keep typing. Oops. Oh, I typed it after. Uh, I didn't line it up right, but it's too high. Let's try that. There we go. Oh, that's because I'm at the margin really. So, um, what happened, you heard that bell. What happened is, is I'm typing after the margin and so the typewriter is wanting to stop on me. So I'm gonna hit the margin release. There we go. So I can keep, obviously my margins are different than when I did this. So, um, sorry for that little hiccup there, but that's good for you to see because you're gonna run into stuff like this. So initially I had it too high, but then I brought it back down, but that is what this really, this button is for is to help you line things up. And I would test the first few times just so you get to know your typewriter and where um, and how to line things up so that if you do reload paper, you can get it lined up exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so let's go down here to the cover and I'm gonna move the carriage. Always move your carriage to the left, no matter what typewriter, just make it a habit. Before you open up the top, move your carriage to the left so that if it has a return handle, it's not gonna scratch. So I'm gonna pop this open and inside you're gonna see the spools. This happens to have metal spools. I don't think these are the original, but they could be. Um, but this will take a universal ribbon and you can find those on our website at jotintittletypewriters.com. Um, we have, uh, we have a, a less expensive one that comes pre-packaged and it's like 20 feet of ribbon. And then we have ones that we hand roll here in our shop and they have about 48 to 50 feet of ribbon on them. And that's what this is right here. And they last you a long time. So you can get them in black or black only. Um, if you want different colors, I know they are available. So you can search on like Etsy um, for various colors. But as long as your ribbon spool is two inches and the ribbon itself is a half an inch then it will fit this typewriter just fine so you just um set them in there no big deal you just plop them in plop them out um, keep in mind that it is messy to work on the ribbon and then you want to make sure that it's threaded through all the guide wires properly. And I have an up close image of this. I mentioned it before. Just go to the original product listing link, which is in the description and look at the images for reference. And that'll help you make sure that you've got your ribbon threaded properly. Also, when you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink. You, um, and if it doesn't auto reverse, some ribbons have a grommet on them that cause it to auto reverse. Um, but if you need to manually reverse your ribbon, you do so. Um, I'm gonna have to close this to show you. You do so right here. It's on the side. 
So it's not very often that you come in across typewriters that have the ribbon reversals on the side, but every once in a while you do. And they're on either side. So on this one, it's sticking out on the right side. So I just press it and that reverses the ribbon. And if I were to get to the end of the ribbon again, you just come over here, press it, and that reverses the ribbon. And you can go back and forth dozens of times before that ink is gonna run out. Also, you have a color selector right here. So you have the black, then you have the red, and then you'll see a white selector. That is for stencils, and you're not ever gonna use it, and if your color selector is on the white, it's not gonna type properly. So if there, there's two things for you to check if your typewriter's not working just right. One, reverse the direction of the ribbon, and two, check your color selector. And if it doesn't, um, and if that doesn't fix it, then um, certainly contact uh, a typewriter repair person. But nine times out of ten, that will that will um, solve your issues. Um, okay, so down here, we talked about the margin release already, but let's go ahead and let's type on this. So let's test. Oh, and let's do the backspace. Here's your backspace. So when you Test out the, there's the bell, and you're supposed to hit the return handle, but it's gonna stop on you. And so let's say you wanna finish your word, margin, then you can finish your word once you hit your margin release. Okay, so you have your shift, and then the shift lock, you kinda have to push back because you'll see this metal piece. I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's a metal piece and that lock has to kind of fit underneath that metal piece in it. What it does is it holds your carriage up so that the capital letters will um, type on the paper. Okay, one more thing to show you. Let's open this back up. This is your touch control that determines how hard these type bars strike your paper. So if you look at your type bars, you'll see two characters per bar, one on the top, one on the bottom. That's the difference between lowercase, uppercase, or the numbers versus the symbols. And that's what that is for. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Um, may you enjoy your typewriter and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and happy typing.